Sweden is famous for ABBA, for being a cold and miserable country, and for having a surprisingly large amount of game developers. Today I'm gonna visit an event called the Indie Game Dungeon and hopefully see some really exciting new games. The Indie Game Dungeon is arranged by Dataspelsbranschen, the Swedish games industry organization, and it provides new and upcoming game developers a chance to show off their exciting new projects. It's a place for indie game developers to meet and greet and exchange ideas, and I also heard they have beer. Guess why I'm coming? This game is called Sulfur. What's so special about it? Well, it's uh, dark and grim, but it's cute and funny. And it's kind of a combination between Counter-Strike and Diablo. So, and your favorite Adult Swim cartoon. So it's everything you ever wanted. Do you shoot any eldritch horrors in this one? Probably. There's a lot of uh, evil spirits and demons and, you know, goblins and all kind of stuff. So ghosts and stuff. So yeah, probably. We'll see. <laughs> We're developing the game. So it's going to be finished and released next year, probably. Uh, so it's, it's, it's basically, this is a demo and we have three, four areas. Um, but there are a lot of dark creatures out there. Wizard's Way Out by Kikimura Games. <laughs> Looks quite challenging. This game, Nezumi, what's the most special thing about it? Uh, I think the most special thing about Nezumi is the fact that it's anime as a pure game. Our special attack, we ripped off the most popular anime and we're proud of it. So which anime is that? Demon Slayer. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna make you feel exactly like the protagonist's goofy sidekick. <laughs> So you're not going for a protagonist, it's going to be the goofy sidekick. Uh, you need to grow into a protagonist. We all start off as something less than a hero and in Nezumi you need to grow into the hero role. So this is the hero's journey personified? Of course, like everything the hero's journey is maybe one of the best journeys you can take in a narrative. I'm noticing that there's a lot of Dutch angles, uh, like a lot of perspective. Is that something you're a fan of? Uh, yeah, we are trying to replicate the feel of PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games and we try to kind of get the vibe of those games without ending up feeling old. And I hope you achieve that. You know, I was thinking of Final Fantasy 7 when it's all the angles. <laughs> yes, uh, we are massive fans of JRPGs and we try to kind of merge in a JRPG into an action game. What's the most fascinating thing about indie games? I think the fact that there are no boundaries. There's there's no expectations. It's purely, what do you want to make as an artist? What do you want to create? It's not something that anybody else has to decide. You, you have full creative freedom. You can incorporate anything that you love, anything that you care about. Nobody else is going to tell you how to do it. You have to find your own way. And that makes it really hard but also beautiful things can happen. And everybody who's here right now, we're all here for the same reason. We like making stuff. We want to make something cool and make something beautiful and make something that touches people and that touches ourselves. And yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing. I love, I love it. And here I thought people were here for the free beer. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt. <laughs> I love filming people when they try VR. It's always quite a spectacle. You guys have the only VR game here. So what's this game all about? Uh, well, this is a, like a historical game. It's set in the Pacific in the 18th century. And you, uh, without spoiling too much, you get shipwrecked. And you, uh, you have to explore some mystical islands. Yeah. Ooh, so spooky! It's kind of historical, but uh, then, yeah, with a twist. <laughs> so, what's the most challenging thing about doing a VR game? 
uh, everything. But in a sense, it's really it's like making any 3D game. But in another sense, like with all the locomotion thing happening. Do you have to think more about immersion and stuff like that than other 3D games? Mm, no, the immersion comes naturally, <laughs> I guess. But uh, yeah, maybe you have to think about... It's fun to use the medium a bit. So in this game, you have to lie down sometimes and you have to like move and yeah, well. Like uh, swim in the water? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. What's the name of the game, by the way? Uh, the name is um, Memories from Beyond a Coral Sea. Could you give me an elevator pitch about this game? Okay, yeah, so this is a point-and-click adventure game in 2D. It's about, it's a love story. Uh, so it's relations, and there's time traveling and scary looking robots. Wow, yeah, that's very concise and very detailed at once. And very consistent and non, uh, not going off in different tangents, right? <laughs> exactly. So this is uh, Justin Wack and a Big Time Hack. Yes, Justin Wack and the Big Time Hack. I wanted something that uh, wasn't taken, let's say. <laughs> this is not going to be taken. So this is going to be Googleable. You yeah. can search for this name at least. It turns out actually there was a guy called Justin Wack. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's never easy, it's never easy. Uh, but uh, this was a game like a, like a homage uh, to like the old uh, LucasArts games from the, like, the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, like I grew up playing those, like Maniac Mansion was the first game I played on C64 that in this genre and I was like, god damn, blown away, you know, like with all the switching between characters and telling a story basically, telling stories in a game like this, I'd never seen it. So this is what I always wanted to do and now I am finally have it out. Uh, and uh, I had a Kickstarter for it. And uh, would you believe it that uh, uh, the man behind Monkey Island actually backed the Kickstarter? David Fox uh, from uh, Zack McCracken and the Alien Mindbenders also helped out, which is, uh, this game's name is kind of a homage to. Who are you? I'm Zeke, Z-E-K-E. -E. Oh, nice. Do you have any games uh, that you're developing? Uh, no, but I, I came here because my friend who invited me here, because I know there's a lot of indie games going on tonight. I'm just cu so curious about everything, so I'm here. And I'm boring. It's this day. <laughs> Why not? Stockholm, and Sweden in general, is a hotbed for game development. And it's easy to see why at an event like this. The passion and the creativity is amazing. And the intensity of the conversations is something you really should experience if you have any interest in indie games or indie games development. Well, there you have it. That was a quick look at the Stockholm Indie Game Dungeon number 25. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe and stay tuned for even more geeky videos coming up in the future.